Hey y'all, it is me, Monet, and we want to let y'all know that the siblings are coming at you, boo boo. We are doing Netflix is a joke on May 5th, 2024 at the Belasco Theater in Los Angeles. So if you're around, you need to get some motherfucking tickets and see your favorite girls do our thing. If you want to see our beautiful faces in pub in person, please go to um uh, seethedragqueen.com and get tickets for uh, sibling rivalry live at the Netflix is a joke festival. And uh, y'all, I am coming to Joe's Pub. I think the first and second, I think the 16th and 17th are sold out, but we still have tickets for the 18th. So come and see me do my thing, my one woman show, Life Be Lifing, which was legendary at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, live for you in New York City at Joe's Pub on January 16th, 17th, and 18th. And last but not least, I am on tour with Madonna until April. So go to madonna.com and see me in a town near you with the actual queen of pop. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, <clears throat> Bob the Dragon Queen cannot be here today, but we have the mother tucking Derek Barry up in the house. Hey, Derek. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good. You know, I must say, in my opinion, you are the star of season 16 because having your presence on this motherfucking uh, talent show was great. Oh, thank you. You know, it was so fun to be uh, considered for this because spring break, and MTV and 2000s, uh, I remember watching that and just, that was the vibe then. You know, right? they always had, they always had a musician. They always had uh, someone that was promoting a single or an album mm -hmm. or to come out. I mean, Britney did TRL so much. Yeah. So this was really fun to be a part of, um, of both the spring break one and the, the Queen uh, Choice Awards. Yeah, Queen Choice Awards. Um, so yeah. I have a question. So I, I mean, I used to watch them too back in the day. Did you? But I never realized until later on, like like a few like years ago, when I saw clips of Rue circling. Like Rue used to do them as well. Do you remember seeing Rue on it when you used to watch it back in the day? I don't remember right? uh, when he did like it in the '90s with Supermodel. Yeah. Um, I've seen those clips since. Um, so I was born in '83, so I was not. I don't think I was watching MTV when Supermodel came out. Got it. Um, but definitely seeing the clips and him performing it outside uh, spring break. That's so cool. Bitch. Like, I love that. I love the runway. And he's just, he was doing it before we all were. Well, I mean, MTV, like, I don't understand why spring break stopped being a thing. Like, I'm like, bring it back. Like, I feel like, I mean, maybe kids aren't going on uh, college spring break anymore. Maybe it's not a big thing. But I'm like, they should bring back spring break mtv i used to fucking live love that shit and i was like i can't wait yeah. i'm in college and i get to go yeah <laughs> but I, never. I know i never did anything like yeah, that yeah. i wish i would have um but, but i was, I was like, broke in college i could not afford no no spring break drama camps you know <laughs> wait, i'm like drama oh, i did a camp? steppenwolf uh two week intensive with steppenwolf <laughs> you know like i did things like that in college but i was uh, definitely not going out and <laughs> Uh, flying to Cancun. Right. I was not doing that. I'm like, these like rich ass kids that they can just be going to, to Cancun. <laughs> like, I'm like, these motherfuckers got money. I don't, I, I have it like that, girl. Right. Um, But you know, enough about fucking spring break. We are here to discuss the second batch <laughs> of bitches for um season 16. And so last week, oh my God, it's like a season eight uh, a thing. We had, t we had Kim and Naomi last week and we have, no way. I, we did, we did, we did. And, um, this is like what? This is double your season because this is this is eight seasons later. Yeah. You were at season eight, and yeah. so far, how do you think these girls are stacking up to um, season eight? Oh gosh, to season eight? Yeah. Oh, that was so long ago. I mean, I feel like this is what I've uh, discovered now with the show because All Stars is so popular. I feel like girls now go into their first season already in an all-stars package like they have to now compete with showing up that way yeah and that's not easy to do because back when we were on season eight we were on logo um i mean obviously we had heavy hitters before us that came in but i just still feel like once all-stars came out and girls really had a budget and money to work with mm -hmm. to put a package together it kind of elevated the show in a way that if you just came in as a regular season it if your package was watered down it looked like you didn't spend any money on Girl. it and so i'm super impressed with what the girls are bringing um what they're making uh q last week was amazing with it um 
Safira, unbelievable. Sure, yeah. You know, like these girls have a package that they came in. And so it I'm super impressed, you know, this week as well. Well, I will say, like in in uh, last season, the season before, <laughs> like the drama was like whatever. And I will say, especially we're, we're, we'll get into it this episode. I'm getting more of that season 16 of Bob and Derek and Thor. Like oh. I'm getting that energy, which I'm very excited about. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I want the girls to be like plain Jane. I love that <laughs> right? character. Oh, we're gonna get, I okay, love good. that character. I'm here for it. So yes, I'm super excited. This is a good seven that just came in. Yeah. So at the top of the episode, we see Hershel Lacour Jeté come in. And um, I like this look. I don't like the little skirt thing. Uh, I think she's just did the cat suit. Like anytime I see like um, a skirt train thing that's just attached to the belt, I'm always very hot and cold about it. And I'm very cold about this one. I'm, I'm not feeling it, but I love her hair and I love this outfit. It's a piece of fabric. Right. <laughs> but is there a hem? Is there is a, it looks like horse hair hem. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I like that. Yeah. Um, I do think that um, maybe if it was just up a little bit higher or maybe the hair is making it look this way. Um, yeah. But I mean, I love the shoulders. The shoulders I'm always are cute. Gonna like that. Yeah. Um, I love the colorful hair. She looks great. Her face is gorgeous. Beautiful. The beat is so good. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, obviously people can walk in with a cat suit, but you know adding more to it for drama is great if it could tear away that's even better if it's with snaps or you know i wouldn't do anything with velcro because it gets caught in everything but mm -hmm. snaps you know it's a little tear away moment that's great too yeah and also I, when you came in i we talked about this last week too your fucking entrance look on season eight was so good and like because i'm not kidding Derek. i, I mean I've, I've said this to you because we you you and i worked together right when your season started you we, we did a gig at club feathers it was you and nebraska feathers. Came. and i tell uh -huh. everyone yeah. all the time i was like oh my god Derek barry was so sweet and so nice i don't know what bob was talking about uh, you were so <laughs> kind to, very kind to me you're a draggers girl you could you know you could do whatever you were just very sweet to me and i've always been very appreciative of that Oh, thank you. I remember meeting you at the at our premiere in New York, mm -hmm. and I found out you were Bob's best friend. And I was like, "Oh my god!" So this is how pretty Bob could be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a fan of you from day one, right when we met. I was like, "Why weren't you on our season?" <laughs> I would have, oh girl, I would have been a mess on season eight. Y'all think Bob's run was a bad? I would have been trash, girl. <laughs> I was not ready for season eight. I was very worried for season 10. Um, but yeah, but your your <laughs> fucking human hair bang unit, you came and you did that thing. I was like, girl, it's human. Well, I didn't know back then, but it just moved so beautifully. That was like four wigs that I had cut up and made into that one. Work, bitch. Yeah. Wait, yeah, you, do, you a, do all your own hair? That one I did, yeah. That yeah. one I did make. That one was actually um, synthetic, but because of the quality of it, um, it was Renea Paris uh, was the wig. Um, and I just cut it up and added extensions and tracks and it was layered and lots of hair. That one was really heavy. Bitch, it looked good though. It looks really heavy. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. Um, but next up is Miss Plasma. Plasma is a New York City queen. And what I, from the, she's one of these queens. She come in, I can sew, I can dance, I can tap. I can, she is professing <laughs> to be a jack of all trades and she, and she can do it all. And I mean, I get it. Boast, big up yourself for drivers. But I'm like, that always leads to someone downfall when they're like, I can do it all. Yes. Because they want to point out that you can't. Right. Yeah. Kind of like Michelle does later on the runway. Exactly. Which is, and I'm like, girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They love to do that. You're giving they, them they ammunition, They come for the bitch. impressions. Yeah. They come for the impersonators. They sure do, girl. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, this is giving me very Robbie Turner vibes. Mm. Um, you know, I'm, I could see Jinx as well. It's very Seattle. Yeah. Uh, for me, I don't know what's in the water in Seattle where they come out like that, but, um, she's not <laughs> from there though. She's New York, right? She's New York. Yeah. She's New York. Yeah. So she must have lived in Seattle at some point <laughs> to get this aesthetic. Um, but I mean, I love it. I think it's really cool. I love when people talk about how their family listened to Judy Garland or they were inspired by Marilyn Monroe. I mean, how could we not have been like if yeah. you watched wizard of Oz growing up, uh, it opened up that, that, uh, catalog of Judy Garland. And then you just became a fan of everything she did, uh, after that. So I, I do love the references to, uh, my fave. I mean, I love Judy, so you know, it's, it's great. I've never seen, I've still have never seen wizard of Oz. I've never seen a wizard of Oz. 
What? I know, I know. I've never seen no. it. No. Well, now I want to watch it, but it just looks so, it's like three hours long. I'm like, girl, I don't got time for that. No, it's not. It's not, not the actual movie. No, it's like an hour and a half. Oh, that yeah. sounds, I could, I could stomach that. You could watch it twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's like, it's fine. Again, I am a little, the 19, like the girls who like period, who, who like become period queens and their entire aesthetic is like this one era. I'm always like, okay. But this is, she looks put together. And um, I mean, someone reads her later. For, I think Plain Jane reads her for her makeup. But um, yeah, she looks put together and she's, and she is giving Seattle vibes and it is a put together yeah. look. But I, I hope yeah, everything. Per- I want to know what's in the purse. Like, what did she really fit in there? What's, Some what's plasma, in there? Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> her money from selling it. Exactly. Let's go on to the next queen, who is Geneva Carr. She comes in and says, Viva Mexico, Carr. <laughs> Brones looks at the guys. I think, I think Brones is... You speak, you, wait, you speak Spanish fluently, don't you? Is that you? Oh, I wish. I did three years in high school. I should have done the fourth year because that was the conversation part. Got so, it. So, um, no, I'm like very limited. Why do I think you speak a language? Do you, do, is there another language you speak fluently? Um, English, really well, <laughs> really well. Uh huh. I can read it. I can read. <laughs> Geneva Carr. Yeah, I was not a fan of this look. It just made she put this like weightlifting belt in the middle and just bulked her up there. And I'm like, that's a, yeah. a, a weird choice. Why would you do that? I can see that. I did like that it was all stoned. Yes. Um, because originally I thought it was like confetti dot or or maybe like a glitter yeah um so on the closer shot i saw all the gold stones on the black yeah uh that i i did appreciate that it looks like a lot of work but uh yeah i mean it's the 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 cinching is not cinching yeah but the lining up of the belt with the dress is cute you know detail yeah a little bit yeah 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 and um you know i think that geneva (laughs) I think her to be a very interesting queen so far. Like I heard her trajectory in this episode, I was not expecting. And then so I am looking forward to hopefully being surprised by Geneva this season. Or maybe I won't, but I was not expecting her to do what she did this episode. So we'll see. You were not expecting it to be good or Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be good. I was like, oh, this, this is gonna be a booger bitch. She's gonna she's, oh, she's gonna be the Okay, bottom. got it. Yeah. Got it, got it. Okay. But yeah, it's yeah, she did very well. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Well, let's go on to our next queen into the work room, who is plain Jane. <laughs> and she walks in and she says, Fasten your seatbelts, because this plane always goes down. It's a blowjob joke. Ooh. If you didn't catch it. Love it. Y'all, I loved it too. <laughs> she looks so hot. The hair is right, the body's right. The, the, she does. The, the, sh- she looks incredible in my opinion well her and someone else's episode we'll get to it but she is so far like just off of entrance looks the most polished i'm obsessed with this look yeah it is perfect um the wow i mean the construction of this is unbelievable yeah and i love it love it love it love it she looks gorgeous the hair is big and beautiful um she gives me kind of like a brooklyn heights uh ish and then some nebraska as well Mm. she's like in in there for me and i love that like um brooklyn is very like beauty and then nebraska is very porn yeah and so i feel like plain jane is like right in the middle of that essence i have a question i mean you may you may you may not be able to answer so you don't want to Will, will will nebraska ever audition for the show or is she um, Nebraska would love to be on the show. Okay. So it. that's in their hands got for it. sure. Work. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I like playing Jean right, <laughs> right off the top. She comes in and she says to Maya, who, uh, uh, she says to Maya, I've never seen a corset add weight to someone. You better work, bitch. Like she is <laughs> reading these girls. She is. Cunting. It's so good. Oh, so good. It's so good. <laughs> so fucking good. I'm, I'm, I love her energy. And she, this yeah. is what I want in my drag race, y'all. All these people yes. out here reading this girl talking about, uh, but, but, bitch, this is good drag. This is what drag That's is. Great. This is drag race and i'm obsessed yeah and she can read someone because she looks like this exactly and that's what a lot of people don't understand is when you put this much effort into something 
you get to look at someone else and you get to read them for their lack of effort. So I just think it it's just a character and we have to enjoy it because it's reading is a dying art form. Apparently nobody wants to be that girl. And um, I love that she said she's not a villain. She's a bitch. I mean, that's they're they're two totally different things. You know, I fucking love she's it. just a bitch. Yeah, yeah I love it. Um, but let's go on to the next queen, who is Megami from that from New York, but more so Staten Island. And uh, mm-hmm. I want to make that very clear. And uh, she <laughs> walks in and she says, "A goddess amongst men," and she gestures to the other girls. What do you think about this look? Uh-huh. Um, it, I like the detailing. I couldn't really understand. Is it a flower down here or a, what is happening at the the hip? Yeah. The bottom of the hip? I'm like, is this supposed to be like her heart? I'm like, why is, is that a heart wh- on her? She wears a heart on her knee. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Of like, <laughs> what in the operation? Like, why is your heart on your knee? I don't yeah. understand. My problem with this look is that, yes, you can throw brooches and stones and everything, but it just looked like there was no intention behind us. Like she was just like, "Oh, I want to like throw things. On. I want to. I want to make this look nice for entrance. So I'm gonna throw a bunch of things on here. It just doesn't feel intention." Yeah, I want to wear a lot. Mm-hmm. I do like that that it went all the way down to the shoe because a lot of people forget about that detailing. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, if you're gonna throw it all over yourself in the top half, I'm glad that you know she got her knee and her feet as well. Yeah, and uh, b- before I didn't realize that she has devil horns. I was like, oh, I didn't realize she had these little devil horns on her head, which I was like, does she, is she like an angel demon? Uh, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a little confused by this look, but um, that being said, her attention, at least bring it down to her shoe. At least we can appreciate that part of it. Yeah. Right. Oh, I didn't know they were horns either. I thought they were like things hanging off the crown. Now they're little horns. And, and she yeah, has this, the crown it. of thorns. She's like a demon yes. devil. Yeah. Angel. Demon devil. Demon angel <laughs> devil. Some, something like that. <laughs> um, and she says that she's the cosplay queen of New York City. Now, that is a very bold statement to say that you like New York City. In New York City alone, there are like eight point. How many? Uh, like how many, Jay? Like 16 million people live in New York City. And so, and you are the cosplay queen of, yeah. Okay, she's been doing that before she has been doing drag. So she is, she needs the crown, cosplay queen. So Eight point four million people, and with drag queens alone, drag queens are about seven million of those people. Okay, so <laughs> declaring yourself to be the cosplay queen is is brave. Is brave, and so she's now again, bold. you're setting an expectation of what of of what we should expect from your runways and your looks. Right. So when they don't match up and people start dragging you, girl, like you made this declaration, so you're gonna have to live with that. She's got the nerve. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It, it, it do <laughs> take nerve. Yes, it do. Um, let's go <laughs> on to the next queen to enter the workroom. Maya Iman LePage, the queen of. She says, "I'm the queen of flips. I don't set the bar. I flips it." That's a, that's a cute line. It is I cute. like that, and that's good. She's setting up her merch. Which is very smart. You know, we learned a long time ago, entrance line turns into merch. Yeah. And so um, we do know her as the queen of flips. And now that's a great tagline. It's, it works really well for her, obviously. I could see little cute characters of her um, flip it on the bar. Um, so it's, it's just great to enter with something like that. Yeah. With, the, with this queen, like, um, I have been in this mode where I'm trying to, I like this thing, like Sephira does it well. She puts in like just enough white in her highlight that it looks really good from far away. In, looking at Maya here, it, or I think she's attempting to do that same thing, but it's not as successful. So as More her, banana powder. Yeah. 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 And we see that too when she goes to do the DMV pictures. Yes. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. But I noticed that with, um, oh gosh, not, it's not, it's not Tamisha. I'm going to say her name wrong. Uh, on on last week's. Uh, 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 very. She was very yellow here. The model. Uh, uh, a tsunami. Tsunami muse. Yeah, um. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And um. But Iman. I mean, Maya comes in. Also, I agree. Like I was trying to because I do. I write notes for this. And I cannot for the life of me remember how to spell this bitch's name. Like, why would you? This, M-H-I <laughs> apostrophe. This is a lot for Maya. Bitch. It, it M-A-Y-A. Is. Try Googling her. Girl, you won't find it. It's too much. Nothing. 
Even, I mean, Iman is the only thing that we're going to remember out of this. Honestly, she called herself Iman and not fucking Maya Iman. <laughs> Just Iman. Girl. Um, <laughs> and she, and she, oh, sorry. I made a mistake earlier. Plain Jane makes the, makes the belt comment to her, um, not Geneva, um, about, oh, okay. yeah, about her waist. And yeah. I mean, she's trying. She's very fluffy up here and she has a skirt. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's still funny and I like that she read it. Also, um, what's her name? Uh, Geneva tells us that she's gone viral a lot on TikTok because she styles her leg hair. Leg hair. And then they showed it. She put butterflies on her leg. Girl, her butterfly leg hair. clips, bubbles. I was like, this is crazy. What? I've never heard of this. Um, but I mean, maybe that's popular in Mexico. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Or in Brownsville. <laughs> or in Brown- Brownsville. It's, maybe. It's bleeding into Brownsville. <laughs> it's giving Brownsville. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, if you could do that to your pussy here, I mean, I think that could be super kind of stunning, but. That could be cute. That could be cute, right? A little, like, you know, situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but let's go on to the final queen to enter the workroom for these seven girls, who is Nymphia. What do you think about Nymphia? this one's really this one's really funny. Yes, yes. and I love uh, I love the bananas. Yara does something similar with b- bananas for her showgirl look in Vegas. Oh, word! And um, I mean, obviously not like this, but you know, bananas. Yeah, and so. Uh, this is really cute. I love the sunglasses. I love it's like Marge Simpson, but with sunglasses. Uh, it's cute. Yeah, I think this is a cute look. So I think this is very strong. I think that right, right, just walking in, we get we understand so much of who she is, her personality, yeah. what to expect from her. But she's not, but she's not like she's not like saying with her mouth. She's just like I'm gonna show you, which I like, as opposed to being like I uh, what's her name Plasma. Like I can do all these things. I can da da Nymphia is like. We're getting everything she is. She's funny. She doesn't take herself so seriously. She's polished. Like, she's showing us without telling us. And I think that's what's important with these entrance looks. Not telling us, but showing us when you walk in. Yeah. How did uh, Jane, how do you think Jane knew that she was going to slip or hoping that she would slip? You think that was just a coincidence? I was sitting there like, wait, what? I'm like. That was very head scratchy. That was kind of wild. Because again, they're not, oh, or, okay, here's my theory. Right. So sometimes like the Vicks in my season, she had to do her entrance like twice, or three oh, times. Twice if something happens with your mic or your reveal, right. something. Right. So I think Got maybe it. she tried to do it first and it mm-hmm. didn't pan out. And then they had to redo it. Maybe her she didn't slip. She she didn't slip. Yeah. Yeah. So like it was there, but she missed it because she has on a uh, seven pairs of sunglasses. Right. So I'm like, what in the I was like, there's no way that plain Jane just ha- like, no. no way, right? Yeah. How do you happen to, uh, yeah, how do you happen to see that no, in the future? Yeah. No. Very weird. Um, and I, and then, oh, so they are do, sorry, they go to do the mini challenge. And, you know, how do you feel about mini challenges, Derek? Are you, are we still into them or do you hate them? Oh, gosh. Um, no, I mean, I like them because do they get to, you get to see the personalities and I do like that the improv comes in because when you enter it can be fully rehearsed and there's it's you're on your own uh you can you know look over at the girls or kind of uh incorporate them into your entrance but it's rehearsed it's planned you've been thinking about it forever and so to throw them into a mini challenge where they do have to especially work with rue yeah um it really separates people that are comfortable in front of a camera uh, working with others and then people that freeze. And so it's kind of like um, an opening for snatch game, yeah. you know, like you have to be on your toes. So I do think that it's necessary to kind of break the ice and find out more about them. I was just obsessed with the fact that Maya fucking fell asleep and I'm like, <laughs> so good. Okay. Y'all just, uh, and I mean, at this point, you guys probably know this, but like you're up from like 5 AM, whatever. to like, get ready. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they bring you to set and you're like waiting. Until, so it's a very long morning. So at this, she probably woke up at 5 a.m. This is probably happening at maybe like, maybe like 1, 2 o'clock. Yeah, let's say noon. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. noon. You know what I mean? So, yeah. and you know, maybe she's a little, she's a little jinx. She's a little narc- narcoleptic. Who knows? But this bitch is sleeping. <laughs> they have to like tap her to go up. I think that's hilarious. And I'm, I'm... Oh, really? Oh. 
Oh, okay. Wow. She, okay. She's improving. <laughs> breaking news, breaking news from our producer. Apparently, Maya tweeted that she was not really sleeping. Mm. Wow. Uh, the conflama. An actress. Yeah, yeah, she's an she, she's she's an attractress, as Karen would say from Will and Grace. <laughs> Um, and I mean, there wasn't really anything of note to me from the mini challenge. I, I love seeing T.S. Madison on my TV any day. And so I, fun. And I love doing anything to interact with Rue because I'm obsessed yeah. with RuPaul. I fucking love RuPaul. Me too. And then so like being able to volley with him and like just, just have a little moment, I'm obsessed with. Yeah. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah. So the girls are going back after they finish the challenge. They go back in the workroom and they're de-dragging. And you're seeing everyone come out of drag for the first time, which you always love. And they talk about who's hot, who's not, blah, 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 blah. And again, plain Jane reading the girl. She comes from Megami and she's talking about how she <laughs> looks like her Russian uncle in drag and out of drag. Again, hilarious. Yeah. She so her. good. She's so good. So good. She's so good. Also, she is a she's a cute boy out of drag. Absolutely. And and so tall. Um, great features. Mm -hmm. uh, very cocky. You know, probably in both ways. So <laughs> you think? I mean, I mean, it, it, it do be the tall, skinny boys. The tall, the tall skinny boys I, hey, always got big dicks. I know that. <laughs> Nebraska six five. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> it's always the tall, skinny ones big. So she probably does, and I'm sure. But in this episode, maybe I'm wrong. But in the first week, they were kind of talking about, oh, who's hot and who they would want to. But I didn't. I didn't. I don't remember hearing that this episode, unless I'm wrong. Was anyone lusting after Plain Jane or any of the other queens? Um, I think just the uh, someone had made a comment about like great features, uh, something like that. I don't remember who said it about Plain okay. Jane, but somebody did. Yeah, but that was like it. Yeah, you know, they didn't really go. They didn't really go in on anyone. I mean, season ten, they had. I mean, I feel. I feel like they were just. Oh, Cameron is hot. Oh, and who wants to bump? I mean, I. I made a little comment that he looked cute, but I mean, I wasn't like going in. Like, I want to fucking suck Cameron's dick. But oh my god, I know they. The thirst for Cameron is still very real out there. It is. It is it's still very real. Cameron Michaels <laughs> is a very cute man. So you guys, yeah. you know, if y'all want him, y'all should have him. You should lust for him. Um, uh, some <laughs> other fun conversations I think happen. Oh, Hershey, Hershey talks about being a dad and like what that's like for her. And yeah, that was shocking. I mean, you're in a throuple. Would you guys ever have kids? You know, I had always wanted either my best friend or my ex to, um, to carry, uh, or, you know, donate the egg or something. But then since Nebraska went through foster care, um, Mac had, Mac Nebraska had talked about wanting to adopt and then Nick wants no kids. So it's very like, we're all across, we're all so different yeah. um, with what we do want. And so I feel like until one of us gets to the point where it becomes very serious um, about it, then I think we're just kind of like tabling it because there's not really something to agree on that would make uh, every single one of us happy. Got it. Word. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, it's a lot. Girl, it's a lot. The only queen I know who has other kids is Tempest DuJour, I think, has kids. I don't know any of the other girls that have kids. But, like, it's a lot to be responsible for another fucking human for the next yeah. 25 <laughs> years. Because we all know, hey, kids ain't kids are not leaving the house at 18 They're anymore, y'all. They're not moving. Nope. The in-law the in -law suite is now where the kids move into. Mm -mm. Yeah, no, you gotta go. And imagine yeah. one of those fuckers being straight. Imagine having a straight kid. I would be so upset. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. And then I just, because uh, I have nieces and nephews that are now teenagers, okay. and they uh, they go through a lot in life. You know, like, I forgot how hard it is in school uh, because it was so long ago. I just know that, like, drama was my safe space. Mm -hmm. And so if kids don't have that right now, it, it's really hard for people to fit in. Yeah. And then they kind of bring that struggle home. And uh, they take it out on their parents. And, you know, we repeat cycles that we went through as kids. And now they see their kids, you know, kind of emulate what they were going through as as teenagers. And it's just it's really it's tough out there. It's tough to raise kids and protect them and then also feel like 
<sighs> you want to hurt them, you know? Oh, absolutely. Like, Girl, I'm so like, angry with them. I mean, I don't want y'all to talk to me for the next two days. Please. <laughs> yeah. Just fucking <laughs> loose on the other side of the house. <laughs> um all right. Jay, am I missing anything that happened? I don't think so. I think that's all I have for the work of nothing. All the drama happens in the drink. Well, not drama, but all the good shit happens in the talent show, in my opinion. Um, so let's start with the talent show. The first queen up. For, well, well, Dar- oh, I have a question. How did it like? How did you? I'm, I'm sure. Obviously, World of Wonder came at you to 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 be part of the show to to be to host yeah. the show. Cute. And did you get to see all the performances? I did the first episode. I got to see most from the back. Uh, because they had for Charlize's people or her team, they had it like, you know, set up as a little backstage area, pipe and drape with a TV. So they can kind of watch and just see, you know, keep eyes on her. Uh Um, And then we could see the show from there. So I got to see that episode that way. The second episode, I feel like I did my intros in the very beginning. Oh, got it. Um, And then... And then they ran the talent show. So I don't think I, I don't remember seeing any of these girls this week. Yeah. But I did get to see some of uh, last week's from the backstage area. And from last week, who who is who was your favorite last week? Um, I really liked Q because it was so different. Yeah, same. Um, and then I loved uh Safira. I I mean the two the top two. And then I would put Mirage in my three, Mirage, like my Mirage. top three what with Mirage doing? because she was so good um, with the dancing, and she's so she's so Vegas. I love her so much. Um, I really think Michelle was kind of hard on her with the whole, you know, if we watched it again, it would be different. Well, yeah, of course, every stripper is also going to be different to every song. Fair point. Uh, they don't have to choreograph something because they're so talented at dancing and making it look like it's a production. Um, that's just something that's within her. And so I don't think anyone should be criticized for that. I think you should be celebrated for being able to run that number twice, three times, and it's always different. And entertaining. But, uh, yeah, I agree. And it's always good. Yeah, yeah, I did not feel like that was a negative, that it wouldn't be the same every time. I'm like... Yeah, me neither. But, you know, once Michelle says something like that, it gets put out there, and then people are like, yeah, I see what she's saying. And it's like, okay, I just don't agree with something like that. Yeah, I would agree. So yeah, those were my top three from last week. And this week. So Geneva Carr is coming out. She starts in a traditional um, Mexican look and she does a Mexican dance. Then she comes out and she does this dancing routine. Now, my problem with this number was that she said, I am like, when, when she came in her, when, in her entrance, she's like, I am the dancing queen. Like I'm a dancing diva. And in my humble opinion, her dancing was not like, the queen of dance that i was like it was good dancing like she could dance but i would just again i was expecting more and like she did that little kick i'm like bitch did that kick barely, barely went above your waist <laughs> she said <laughs> like I, that was my problem with it but yeah i thought it was a good number i was just she just set me up i was expecting like some kennedy davenport shit i thought she's about to like right. dance like that you know what i mean and it wasn't that yeah yeah in the villa of browns She's the dancing queen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But, and then online, there's a lot of discourse because, and which again, you're not going to please everyone, but like, right. you know, some like Mexican fans are like, uh, stop like tokenizing your Mexicanness. Like, we're more than this, like, blah, 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 blah. But other Mexicans are like, I feel really seen. I feel really celebrated. And again, Mexican people are not a monolith. Everyone's going to have different opinions, but I, I always find it very interesting when it's so like polarizing versus someone like, we'll talk about in a second, Nymphia, all the comments I'm seeing, everyone, like, uh, 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 Asian Americans are, like, praising her for, like, thank you. So it's just very interesting. Yeah. Well, I think with Geneva, and this is one thing I would focus on, when you're on the show and you have someone like Becky G, who she idolizes, saying how proud she is, I would focus on that. So I wouldn't really care much about what people online are saying when one of the biggest pop stars, you know, for her world is celebrating her and saying i love this i'm very proud of you um people are always going to have opinions online but if she doesn't come there and celebrate her heritage and say i'm the first mexican born you know queen, whatever her title is there then they're saying well you weren't 
you weren't proud of who you were, where you came from, why didn't you showcase that? So I would always say go more. Yeah. Just, you know, throw it out as much as possible and then they'll use what they want in editing and the rest is on you when you travel, you know? Yeah, I agree. But I think that I, I love the, 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 the traditional Mexican dance. That was beautiful. I just want to yeah, it was more. really a really pretty opening. Very I loved beautiful. It. Very, very, very fun. gorgeous. Fun. Yeah, I really did. And yeah. um yeah, I I think I think she did a good job. I just want a little more bucking, if you will. Um Yeah, she got big Texas hair, both both hairs. Bitch. Or I those big don't Texas. I think that work that looks good on me. Like I big hair like that just and she looks great. And girls yeah. who like do big hair, it, no, no, I, for me, I can't wear that hair. I think it just, it just, I'm, I'm just a, 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 a kitty cat kind of girl, you know. Yeah, I like the more like natural, yeah, kind of hair. I like it to look like I just went to a salon and they did it, right? You know, exactly. Yeah, that's because we're so soft, generic and feminine. We can, our we're feet. so little, petite women. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on to Miss Hershey. Jet, uh, Hershey Lacour Jeté. Um, this number, <laughs> I was confused. I was like, why is she stranded in the jungle? And I was trying to understand what this narrative was. Yeah. But it's funny that she, like, all of a sudden you see this bitch, like, poking through this, like, jungle. Like, it is. It's funny and it's silly. Um, and the look was a, Ill, was a little ill-fitting, but I love the number. I loved her dancing. I loved everything she did. I was just confused as to what the narrative was, but the number was great. And I, I was singing it like I was like I, all day long. It was, it was a good number. She's a Cub Scout. A Cub. Lost in the wilderness. And the only way to get out is to flip her hair through it. Oh. I don't know. Oh, I like, is her hair like a know. machete? And you're like. <laughs> Maybe she's like cutting through the. Yeah, sure. We're going to help her out. We're here. helping out the narrative. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. I like We're going to walk people through this. I like this. Actually, I'm kind of brilliant. Honestly, that is a, that is a Quentin Tarantino movie. A woman with like, with blades in her hair and. Blades. Yeah. Oh, I love fights it. Fights with her hair. Oh my God. Yeah. she call, hit up, uh, DM Quentin Tarantino. Tell him you have a movie for him, girl. You can be the, the star of the next Tarantino <laughs> film. <laughs> I'm into it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Uh, but yeah, but even she was kind of confused. Not she was confused, but even in Untucked, she talks about it a little. Like she's like, people are going to, you know, be confused, but I'm just in the wilderness and I went wild. You know, like I don't know what exactly <laughs> she is doing there, but um, but it's fun. And it was unexpected for her to um, to do a lot of those moves, I think, dress like this. Yeah. I wasn't expecting her to like, do all the hair whipping and flipping. Yeah. And um and she and she's a really good dancer. She moves well. So yeah. It was, it was very she busy. does. And she's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I like her on this cast. Yeah. Yeah. Very bubbly. I love the bubbly personalities on the show. Yeah. This episode is supported by FX's feud, honey. Capote versus the Swans. From creator Ryan Murphy, starring Naomi Watts, Demi Moore, and Tom Hollander. The series follows acclaimed writer Truman Capote, who surrounded himself with some of society's most elite women whom he nicknamed the swans but his acts of betrayal destroyed those relationships banished him from high society and sent him into a spiral of self-destruction fx's feud premieres january 31st on fx stream it on hulu our next partner has truly made a positive impact on the most important person in my life yes and no, I'm not talking about Bob. I'm talking about my kitty cat, my little Colleen. My cat's old food would stink, stink, stunk, okay? I used to dread every time I had to feed her, girl, because it was just boring. It was whack. It was weird colors. And I could see Miss Colleen losing interest as I would pull it out the can. But thank God we found Smalls. If you're a listener of this show, you know that my cat cannot live without Smalls, girl. Smalls cat food is protein-packed recipes made with preservative-free ingredients you'd find in your fridge and is delivered right to your door. So make it your New Year's resolution to get your cat eating healthier with Smalls. Smalls was started back in 2017 by a couple of guys home cooking cat food in small batches for their friends. A few short years later, they've served high-quality meals to millions of cats around the world. It's 2024, y'all. Are you still feeding your cat kibble? Mm -mm. Head to smalls.com slash rivalry and use promo code rivalry at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use my code. 
Rivalry for 50% off your first order. One last time, that's promo code Rivalry for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. Next up is Miss Plasma. And Plasma is doing um, a live sing impersonation reveal uh, fantasy together. What do you think about this number? I, I like it. And that's because when I was putting mine together, I had like 15 or 20 impressions and I had to cut them all down and rapid fire and just boom, boom, boom. And the thing is that when you're doing something like this, of course, in your head, you're planning your 90 minute show, 75 minute, hour long, whatever it is. So you're just giving people a taste of it. Um, this is really could be broken up now into uh, three parts of a show for her. Mm -hmm. And so I love it. It's a little snippet. It's uh, very well put together. I like the stripping part of it. I like the something stuck in my throat and then taking off the collar. Uh, so I thought it was really conceptually well done. Uh, she sounded great. Impersonations were fun. Uh, I love interacting with the judges. Obviously, that's always a bonus. Uh, and it makes you look like you're very comfortable with them. Like they're not, you know, so superior to you mm -hmm. that you're nervous. You're just incorporating them into your act, which I loved. So yeah, it's very New York. It's very Broadway. It's very burlesque. Uh, it's all of it to me. A little cabaret in New York, you know? Well, I think with yours, or you were just focusing on one thing. I, I, I do feel like she bit off a little more than, more than she can chew because I think if she just focused on the singing, I think it would have yeah. been really good. I think because her yeah. she sounds amazing. But then, like, don't you try to do, do the impression part? I feel like that's when, like, even just the singing and the reveals, I think that's, like, a lot to do in 60 seconds. And then she threw in, when she started doing the impressions, that's when it felt, like, really rushed and it felt really hurried and it felt like she, like, it, was like, it was like, what's happening? So I think that's when it fell off the rail. So I think she, if she would have just cut it down to at least two other things, maybe impressions and reveals or singing mm -hmm. and just impressions. Singing it reveals. Was just, it was, yeah. it was, I don't know. It was, uh, I felt like the third thing just really threw her off. And then she says to the camera, she goes, being underestimated is a powerful tool. Bitch, who is underestimating you? Literally, no one has said this. You are fighting yourself. No one is underestimating you. No one says that you can't do it. No one thinks you're bad. You are literally fighting with yourself. Yeah. You know what I think it is? Is it's the it's the uh, underdog theater kid right. that's coming into this world. And you are fighting yourself there sometimes. You know, I remember looking at people like, I don't have Naomi's body. I don't have Kim Chi's creativity. Mm -hmm. I don't have Bob's humor. And so, you know, when I'm in that top five and I didn't dance like Chi Chi. So I'm looking at all of them. And even though they may not be saying something to me or about me, I still feel like, oh gosh, am I, am I good enough to be here with these people? You know? Mm -hmm. And I think that she's coming into that with that mindset already and feeling like I have to prove so much. I have to prove this. I, I do all these things very well. So it's, it's tough for, you know, that theater kid that's always going to kind of feel like they're, they're being bullied or uh, not appreciated. Yeah, I feel that. You know, I, I mean, I mean, I was, I was a choir kid, and I, I definitely had some of those feelings as well. But I think that for all you future girls going on the show, just know, like, bitch, I got to this point in Drag Race that like thousands of girls wish they could get on. That's yeah. because there is something that they think that I'm really good at. So just like hold mm -hmm. on to that, as opposed to like trying to like literally starting fights with yourself. Also, when she finishes her number, yeah. she does the most cringy thing, especially after. It was edited to not be a great, well, not edited, but it wasn't a great performance, like, as we're seeing on TV. And then her doing, like, the, it was so cringy. I was like, girl, you're not, it's not a good edit. I don't know why, but she doesn't know that, right? She, in her mind, she killed it. She thought she was about to Crushed get, it. praise the house down. So yeah. 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 Which I thought that they did, uh, I think they did appreciate it. I think they just know it's a lot to pack in, mm -hmm. but, um. You know, she's ambitious, and I think that that's going to pay off for her career. Maybe not, like, right now on uh, this challenge, but I think that she, there's a lot that she could do with this now. Yeah. From here. Well, mark my words, y'all. I feel the energy of a of a Jen kind of edit for this queen. I feel like that, that weaponizing the BFA kind of edit for this girl, for obvious yeah. reasons, and... It's gonna get it's it's gonna get cringy. 
Okay, everyone, just know it's going to get very cringy with this queen as the season progresses. I will, as my name is Monet Xavier Change, I <laughs> can guarantee this is going to happen. I can't wait for her and Q to meet. Oh, God. Because you know Q is going to just gobble. Girl. she They're going to go at it, and it's going to be about who does what better. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Next week, they're all meeting each other. Finally. Yeah. That's going to be exciting. Yes, I'm excited for the, the girls that kind of like, you know, are similar to me and see where that goes. Yeah. Which similar? I think I think you're right. I think Q and this queen. Um, mm -hmm. Who else is a dancer? We know Maya is a dancer. Is there another dancer on the other side? Uh... Yeah, I think uh, Mirage, but they're so different, they're different you yeah. know? Yeah, very different kind of uh, feelings. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. I don't know. We'll see when they're together. Yeah. Like, I think when, when they first come in and they meet, um, which we see in the preview, that pa first part. And I also wonder if it's going to be this A cast versus B cast is always going to kind of be against each other because they um, they already know one group better. How long yeah. that Will that last? Well, hands down, I will say of, of the two premieres, this was my favorite episode. This second one, I think was to me, in my opinion, better than the first. In terms of not just the talent show, just like energy of like the dynamics of the Queens. Primarily because of Point Jane. Um, yeah. But like this group, I just like this group more. So we'll see. Yeah. I, I It definitely shows that someone like Plain comes into a situation and shakes everybody she up. She really does. She really yeah. does. I'm obsessed. Okay. Let's go on to the next queen who was Nymphia and um, doing a traditional, uh, I think, Taiwanese um, dance number. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think? I thought this was beautifully done. I loved the sleeves. Michelle comments on that as well. Uh, the sleeveography, which I've never heard before. I think maybe Coco Montrese invented that. <laughs> but uh, this was this was really beautiful. Love the colors. I love the makeup. Um, very ethereal. So pretty to watch. I love this. I love this number. Yeah. It's so beautiful. It's so dope. Mm -hmm. It's so different. It's just like what she did with like, she did like dragon kind of makeup and like the sleep. Yeah. It's just, and she was so graceful when she does that turn and she like rolls onto the floor and she goes into that split. And then she holds her leg at the end. She is just, yeah. it was stunning to me. I thought this was stunningly beautiful. And I am yeah. pissed that she was not in the top because it was my favorite number of the night. I think, do you think Plain putting her sixth really messed with the odds? Because there's only six people voting, you know? I mean, there's only six votes for, well, I don't know if that ends up being seven because there's seven people, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they can only vote for six people because they can't vote for themselves. So uh that had to mess it up yeah. you know probability wise that through through things yeah i don't know much about algebra but however that all works <laughs> yeah. out i'm sure that affected the it thing. did something it did something girl <laughs> i am not a statistician <laughs> i am not a singer but i'm a fierce queen. um yeah, yeah but i thought this was so beautiful and i thought it was so well done very reminiscent not obviously not the same but gia gun like in in all stars four I was oh, surprised yeah. that Gia was not in the top. I thought for sure Gia's number was going to be in the top because it was. I was there. I watched it. It was so beautiful and so well done and so different. Um, yeah. So, but we weren't rating a queen. The judges chose that time, and this time the girls decided. So, yeah. But I thought I love yeah. this. It was beautiful. Also, she says that she's um, spreading yellow fever, which she can say <laughs> that. Can I say that? She can say that. <laughs> That's her life, and she's only been doing drag. <laughs> For five years. To me, this is someone yeah. so polished for five years, right? It it really is. Yeah. And I think that there's something just different. Um, I love that she talked about it being such a small community for drag there, but yet uh, so progressive for gay rights and that it's a family there because um, it does not feel like that in other... I don't know how New York feels for you, but Vegas is not... Uh, a place where I would say it feels like a drag family, maybe mm -hmm. at live, um, okay. you know, like that's a family, yeah. but I don't feel like the community on the whole, because there's so many different clubs and you can't work at this one. And, you know, this girl doesn't like this one. And it's just, it's a lot of politics. I feel like it in Vegas. And so I like hearing that there are places like Taiwan that 
feels like a family for for drag and they're supportive of each other and you know i i would love to know more about that yeah i mean when i was coming up in new york city it felt very family like everyone used to work at all the all different bars we'd like pop up at a queen show and then like, do a number and then go down the street right. and do a number at this other queen show so when i was i don't i don't i've not been in new york city drag for like what uh, since I got on the show, really. So I can really speak to it now, yeah. but when I was coming up in New York City Drag, it felt very family. I loved it. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I love hearing that. Um, let's go on to our next queen, who was Megami doing... What's the, what's the name of the song again? Um, <laughs> what's going what's on? What's going on? I know. Girl. I I just... Okay, this is the thing that I do that I will say. It is, lip syncing is an art. And so when you can, you know, when you can look like you're singing the song, it's impressive. Yeah. So I thought that's kind of what she was going for um, with it. But I got to agree that if she wasn't going to start painting on those uh, cards on the on the easel, then it's very distracting that they were there. Uh and then I did she ever open the flag? She or never did she opened just... the flag. She just had it bunched up in her hand the whole time. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So there could have been a lot more to do with this. Like maybe if you're crying, um, and you're using the flag as like a a napkin, <laughs> something, um, something. Give us something. something, girl. Yeah. It just needed one more. One. Like, eight, eight more. But... <laughs> something, girl. It needed. It needed something it was, uh, it was, just to elevate it. There was just to no the payoff. Level. To your point, we saw this easel with these cards. So yeah. you're already setting, it's like fucking Chekhov's gun. We know that we're going to see, we're, something's going to happen with these cards. And then, so we're waiting for this payoff at the end. And then it's just three three uh, cards with like, with, I, I, it just, the payoff was not there. And the number yeah. just lacked any dynamics. It was like, she was doing this lip sync thing and, I don't know if Megami is a fierce lip syncer off the show, but the watching like this was not a, a Latrice Royale lip sync where you see Latrice can she, Latrice can lip sync the alphabet and you sitting there like give me a, a yeah. give me a new letter, girl. I want bitch make That's up some it. letters like it because it's yeah. so great and Megami is not yeah. that. And it was just the, having the flag felt distracting. And I mean, mm-hmm. Plain Jane's read of her was the best. The best. Iconic. I, and that, her read was better than the talent show. <laughs> like, it was better than her talent. That was, that read was a talent. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I just think that she needs to, the thing is that, and I will say, if we do need, drag needs to be protected. Yeah. Yes, I completely agree with this. I understand this. So, she's saying that just being in drag is a talent and that we need to be protected. If that's what this number is, then she did it. I don't know if it should have been in a talent show, but I do think that drag is a talent. So it's very like, uh, it's just missing links. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, this is not great. Uh, if, if, if there was a bottom, she, this bitch would be going home for sure. I mean, yeah. If there were seven people, she's eighth right oh. now. <laughs> for sure. Ah! She, yeah. Yeah. She <laughs> ate that. <laughs> Girl, no, 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 no. Is there? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was not great. I, this, I have nothing else to say about this number and I, I, I feel bad for her that she did this on TV. I, <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? This will be one of those numbers she'll do at a club or at a theater, and it will be standing ovation, and people will be like, oh, it was the best thing I ever saw. Especially now. I mean, especially what? now. Bitch, on her, when she do her club tour, bitch, you better do this song at every club. You're going to get tipped the house yep. down. Uh, yes, she will. Yeah, people are going to go. Will. For They're going to protect her because now you're going to protect not being, her queer art. You're not getting in. You're not going to be infamous for this number, girl. And people love that shit. So milk it. Yeah, you better. The, you better. You, you, you better get some. Uh, you better get some. Uh, some some index cards. So you can travel better with them too. <laughs> Do some index. She could borrow. Um, she could borrow. Oh God, the one that sang live that had the index cards. I already forgot. Uh, uh Patty. Uh, Patty Labelle. 
Yeah. Mm. No, she could borrow uh, plasmas. Oh, she plasma. had the little index cards with her impersonation. She just had, held up the names. Yes, girl. <laughs> Uh, oh, Megami, God bless her, our our queen from Staten Island. Okay, let's go on to the next girl, who is Amaya Iman LePage Brooks Dallas Davenport Kiki the Third, um, <laughs> the dancing diva of Miami. And yeah, you see now here, her makeup looks good. Mm-hmm. Like it, I like the white. It, it is a little too white, but it's still like you see, bitch. You, bitch, I, I can see her from across the street. She looks amazing. Yeah. Uh, what, yeah. what do you think of this number? I mean, I love this number. She's showing us, this is the thing. Yes, we know that you're the queen of flips only if we know about you or have followed you or saw you. Yeah. For some people, they're being introduced to her right now. And so you have to do what you do best. And so I, I loved it. It was so many tricks. I love the box. Um, it's just so exciting to see someone have this capability uh, to move like that, to move their body like that. And even in the opening, like the way that she was just moving, coming forward to the song was so well done. Yeah. And that sometimes it's like, you know, when you watch Juju B lip sync and she's just like embodying the song, this is what I felt like she was doing in the beginning. And then just boom yeah. into all the tricks. So loved it. Listen, ever since Aja, uh, is she going to jump from there from that box? All star three box. Is- yeah. Are, bitch, they are paying the rent at RuPaul's Drag Race, okay? These boxes are now the new, the, the, the newest cast member, a judge every season. The box is giving a girl a second life on the show. And um, my only critique and fear for girls like Maya, who is like, this is their thing, they're like what they do. Like on the first episode, you are giving us everything you got. Everything. So everything. All every trick. Yeah. yeah. So when it comes time for a later challenge or a lip sync where you like you find yourself in a bottom and to save yourself, we've already seen like your bag of tricks. So it's like I hope that she's there's something else really m- remarkable that she can do we haven't seen yet. Or yeah. queens who are the queen of flips, this is your talent. Maybe now that talent shows have become like a staple for the first episode, even regular seasons now, maybe think of another talent that you have so that when you come time to lip sync, you have this whole other fucking satchel of other things you can pull yeah. out your purse. That's my only thing. Yeah, especially because right now we kind of, if history repeats itself, you're not going home the first episode uh, because they do want the girls to meet, you know, in the split premieres. Yes. So that is smart. Uh Hopefully she can pull out a breastplate Hopefully. because that's a talent <laughs> that everyone's using nowadays. Boxes and breastplates. Boxes, boxes and a, breastplates. A, oh my God. A world tour. <laughs> that is a memoir. Boxes and breastplates. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see. I love yeah. her hair in this outfit. She looks, she looks great. Yeah, she does. I love that color. Yeah, it's beautiful. Like a chartreuse or something like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. I was going to say like a citrine yellow. Yeah. So pretty. Let's go on to the final queen and her talent, who was um, Plain Jane doing her Burger Fingers talent. What do you think of this talent, Derek? <laughs> Burger Fingers. Um, I mean, it was very surprising for me. This is not the girl that walked in yeah. to me at all. Like, very different. Huh. Um, super fun, though. I I still don't know. So Burger Finger is like, the smell of when a burger drips on you or what is it the cheese or the grease or what is a burger finger? Yeah, I don't know. And I have to be very <laughs> honest, y'all. Very honest. I was not cackling like RuPaul. I did not think this number was hilarious. Like apparently everyone else did. I thought it was a good number, but I was not like blown away. Like how RuPaul and the judges were even the catch up thing at the end. Again, I get why that shit, why that shit should be funny. And people think it's funny, but I personally was not like guffawing over. It. And again, this is someone who is, I'm obsessed with this bitch. This first episode. I fucking love her. I think she's, I think she's hilarious. This number for yeah. me was not that I was like, okay, that's fine. It's funny. It's creative, but I was not gagging over it. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, she's going to get some burger endorsement. Oh, for sure. Hopefully. Bitch. Something. This looks like Burger King will come for her. Yeah. Oh, bitch. So that's getting good. a Burger King campaign. Work. I know. Work. 
Burger Burger King finger. Burger King fingers. Girl, <laughs> I mean, smart. She just this 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 bitch is playing the long game. It's very smart. But I will yeah. say when she did that reveal <clears throat> into that latex thing and the big tits, she is the most well, her and Nymphia, I think, are like the most polished queens we have this season. Their look yeah. is always very, very, very well done, very polished, beautiful. Yeah. She's beautiful. And um she is fun to watch. I love that she is a tall statue. I mean, she makes a burger look sexy, which I've never thought of a burger being uh, sexy. Katy Perry ever. would like to have a word with you, Derek. Katy Perry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. I mean, Katie's was Katie's was real. You're right. Katie's was really well done. Still super weird. And I think of the video. I think it was like J Lo that was in the bathroom with her. Someone was in the yeah, bathroom. With yeah. Her. At uh, and it was uh, super uh, awkward. Gala. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, super awkward. Yeah. Uh but yeah, this is this is something that's going to lead to other things for her, you know. I, and this is what's great about this show is when Rue puts his stamp of approval on something, you you get to take it and run with it and do so many things and it opens up doors that you never even thought were possible for your career. So, um I do hope that it it's, that she can capitalize on this for sure. Something burger. Yeah, just look at me. RuPaul was a guest on my talk show and it got canceled. So, like, the sky's the oh. limit for you guys. When we're on, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It didn't get canceled. Well, I'm glad I had an opening today. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's. Oh my God. We have to go. Let's go on to the runway looks. I forget. There's just so much material these episodes. We have interest looks, talent. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Nymphia. I thought this was creative. I didn't like the mid one, the dress one. I mean, I. It was, it's, it's fine. It wasn't my favorite part of it, but I think overall, this is very conceptual, very well done. Yeah. And again, this bitch is polished. This hair was so cool. So cool. I love the little caps at the end that make it a banana, yeah. like that little bit of detail. Yes. So cool. Um, she looks great. This was one, two, three, four outfit. Well, five, right? She opened in one, two, oh, yeah. three, four, five total. Shit. I mean, that's really, Word. that's amazing. It's really cool to see something like this. I like that bananas were her theme, uh, her theme uh, for this episode. So I'm hoping that that just like lined up that way. Um, and then, you know, no bananas next week. Yeah. You know, because uh, I don't know if they told them, OK, you know, week one is going to be your reveal runway. Yeah. I don't know if they got it that way. So um, that will be interesting to see if like bananas are reoccurring yeah but uh i don't think they will be hopefully not i mean she did them they're rotted now that now <laughs> she showed the last phase of a banana and we're done work I, I like that very poetic let's go on to the next queen which is hershey lacour jeté and um you know the using a a a, a, a reveal code a cover up as a as a look for your reveal, I think it's a really cheap way out. I think that is the <laughs> I think it's cheating a little bit, like just using a, a ruffle code as like yeah, this is my first look. No girl, and um the second one I agree with the judges. The length of it was weird, and I wish it was a little more. I wish it went all it was like tight all the way down to her knees, and then had the mermaid there. Then that would have been yeah. sexy. You know what I mean? This felt very church lady. Yeah. Well, I mean, and she saved it by saying that in Untucked. That that's what it is, you know? Um, yeah. Le longer or shorter. Yeah. Uh, to me, it should always either, you know, touch the ground or it should be at the knee. That like in between area just feels like you got it half off because it's half off. Yeah. Yeah, I wish, but I love the color. The color is beautiful. I think her make, her mug and her hair is gorgeous. I just wish this dress was a little more tailored and we actually got a real first look as opposed to just putting a reveal going on, girl. Yeah, I do like the uh, shoulders in this. Mm -hmm. And it is pretty. It looks, it really matched her, which is, it's cool to see because from here she looks just like shiny and naked. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah, I like that. Let's go on to our next queen, who is Plasma. So Plasma was a live um, a life science pin cushion. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure <clears throat> if there was like a reason why she was that, but um, what do you think about this look? 
Yeah, her grandma, her grandma sewed. Oh, her grandma. So she, the, yeah, she looked at pin cushions like, you know, that her grandma had. Um, the, it's kind of like giving a little bit of Bumblebee too. So, uh, not Bumblebee, Ladybug. Ladybug. Um, I can see yeah, that. Yeah, Ladybug as well. I can see that. It's, it's really pretty. I like that there were, there were a lot of um, parts to it as well. The only thing for me is when she turned around uh, and was walking back, it was very saggy in the butt. Yeah, yeah. And she had, a, she, had a, she, had a, she had a poopy diaper. Yeah, and you have to turn around. So you've got to look at that stuff in the mirror. You've got to take it in. Um, maybe do like a stretch, a stretchy gusset in the, crotch in the crotch if you know that something that that so that that's not what you're walking away leaving us with because a lot of times queens turn around and everything from the front was good and then they turn around and it's like oh man yeah that we shouldn't see that yeah she clearly did not um she using non-stretch material for your leotard we've seen this like three times a season already with safira someone else and now plasma is just what wow. yeah. leotard sh like derek says if you if you if it has to be non-stretch put in the pussy area just put that like yeah. Four inches, make that stretch. No one will ever see it yeah. unless you do a high kick or a split somewhere. And just put a gusset yeah. that stretches on there. Yeah, please. Please do that for yeah. us. Please, guys. We're begging. Um, <laughs> next to the stage was Maya Iman LePage, Brooks Davenport, Wilkes II. And <laughs> um, I was kind of confused by this. I get the last one with the leotard. She said the first one was like for the winter in Miami. I was confused by what she was, was happening. Yeah, this is interesting because both the Miami Queens um, did this kind of like bathing suit. Wait, who else is from Miami? On, um, the girl last week with the towel and it spun oh, into a yes, bathing yes, suit. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so it's what's her name? Morphine. Morphine, yeah. yes. Morphine um Dion. Lo Morphine Love yeah. Dion. She did the same thing, which I thought was kind of weird to that both Miami girls have bathing suits, mm -hmm. but at least this one had more to it. Um I agree with Michelle, you know, you have to you have to start and at least walk forward with it. Yeah. It shouldn't be just something that you walk out in and look at the judges and then you take it off before you even step out of the bitch. You know. She came on the runway and immediately threw the coat off. She's like, I'm gonna get this shit off. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. She, well, I mean, winter was over. It was hot. <laughs> she said, I got to get rid of it this. It's 91,000 damn degrees in here. And she threw that coat off. Yeah. I was like, we didn't get to see it. Like, I still don't remember what this coat even looked like because she took it off so fast. Yeah, but um, yeah, I thought the hair was interesting, and the hair—I think the hair was cute. I like that she brought the fabric up. She made a hair tie with it. I like that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's cute. Yeah, it just revealed too, too way way too quickly. Way too quickly. Yeah, which is unfortunate because we want to see more of that. You know, yeah. uh, even her, she does a little spin in it. Something. Yeah, you know, let's like sell the, the garment, walking. girl. Sell the garments. You paid yeah. a lot of money for these fucking looks. Let us see them. Yeah, I think this is another one because she says in Untucked that she wishes that she would have worn something else. Or I don't think they thought that this was going to be the first runway. Yeah. You know, they probably thought it was like Eleganza or Best Drag or something like that. So um, that's yeah, kind of, you know. Another pro tip. All your runways have to look. Inside tip. Here then. Girls, you never, you never know how the runways are going. We, you don't know when how the runways are going to stack up. We, we, you, yeah. You don't know until like two days before your runway what the runway is going to be for the next challenge. So, yeah. You and you might have prepared something amazing for one, and then they turn that into a mini challenge, girl, or even a a quick drag for something, Ew. and it's like, are you serious? Crazy. So, yeah, I don't know if they they give us just. A lot and then they kind of figure out i think when we get there what they're going to do with it yeah. you know yeah i don't know how scheduled everything can can be yeah um let's go on to our next queen who is geneva carr and i thought this was very good i did not i love a reveal i can't see coming i didn't i don't know what to expect um this was cool this was really cool really really yeah. really well done i love this mariachi look the oddest witch, mm -hmm. the bottom look had a little uh, the reveal, the look to reveal to. 
because the mariachi look is so strong, right? It's it's it's, it's a sequin. It's sequin. It looks really great. And then the the dress un, under it feels a little boring. If we could have just maybe at least stoned that pink belt or something to give it as much a flash, yeah, flash like the like the mariachi look has. Yeah, she was just being. I think one of her. I think she said her grandmas or the ladies or you know. So she was doing more. Um, I don't want to say pedestrian because that's not a nice word. But she was doing something that they would actually have worn or did wear. Yeah. So. But your grandma, that, and your auntie was not on Drag Race, okay? They yeah, were, exactly. They were uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they were civilians living a normal life. You, you are on Drag Race, girl. <laughs> you got, you got, you got to step it up, bitch. But I love, yeah. I, I love the reveal. I just wish the bottom one had a little more going on. Yeah, I love when something is a reveal, like my my black dress to white dress. It was a reveal dress. It wasn't, I'm taking anything off. And that actually wasn't even a reveal runway. That was a black and white runway. And I wanted a reveal in the black to white. And so I'd love that she did something like that, where it just comes down and now it's something new, but nothing was on the stage. So that is a cool, that's an actual reveal versus... A, a strip. strip yeah which a lot of girls did a lot of the other girls bitch it was just bodies of fabric just on the stage they had to like hop over them they had trying to like side yeah. up their own clothes because they just left it all on yeah. there so she just was very clean very good job yeah very clean love that next up <laughs> megami megami from staten island um let's talk about this look Derek. what do you think about megami's look <laughs> Uh, it's a, it's a lot of things, but we kind of were introduced to that with her opening look. You know, she likes to put a lot of things, a lot of places. Yeah. Uh, cosplay queen of New York city. Yeah. This is, this is cosplay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, For sure. So I, I, I I don't know what it is. She looks like how the Bible like actually describes angels. Like I've seen this text, like when they describe angels, angels aren't like these like things like in like the real biblical like tree, ancient text. Apparently they're like these yeah. scary things with all these wings and crazy eyes. So that's what she looks like to me. Mm-hmm. It is scary. Yeah. And that's cool. Um, I mean, there, there has to be, the reveal can't be hands on your eyes. Girl. I mean, eyes on your hands. Girl, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Girl that's my Woo. thing, right? And I was like, and again, she didn't really do a good job of hiding this reveal that was coming. And also, if this is the reveal of your reveal look, like at least to the thing, have you ever seen this thing um, where cosplayers, they like put liquid latex over their eyes to make it look like they don't, like it's just skin there? At least, like, yeah. and they put you put a little hole so you can obviously see. At least, like, have that because then she had this, like sclera lenses on, but we can still see like your eye. It just wasn't it wasn't giving what I thought she was gonna give. Or put like something over your hand so that we don't even see like you are you, your hands and you like rip them off, and then we see the eyeballs. Like something more. It just wasn't it wasn't thought out well, and it just wasn't it wasn't a reveal. It was not a reveal. Yeah, it was not a reveal. Um, I mean, she did try to sell that it is Girl. that the eyes on her hands, that is the reveal. I love when the judges are talking about it. And I think it's Michelle. She goes, her hands. <laughs> it's just the reveal is her hands is so funny to me. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. Not the eyes on the Girl. hands. But I mean, she like her talent, though. We wanted something else. You know, one, I you say eight more things. I say at least one yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, this needed one more thing, you know, and we needed one more thing. Yeah, I, yeah, oh, poor Megami. Um, yeah, this is not the best week for her. So, but no one went home. So, you know what? Next week, y'all, she can come and really turn the beat around yeah. and like really sell it next week. We we'll, we shall see. We shall. See. She can turn her hands around. <laughs> <laughs> let's go on to our last queen who is plain jane now she comes out as a, a russian something yeah and she reveals like, like a snow what? queen um she really looks like brooklyn here I see like it. that's what i mean i see it's it. crazy it's crazy to me yeah she's very pretty she's a very pretty so queen. 
this was not, uh, again, something that I ever expected to be under this outfit. <laughs> you know, I thought like maybe dripping ice crystals or, you know, something where, remember Kim K was wet at the mat yeah. with the latex and the drips? Like, you know, I'm thinking something like that, but in blue or icy, cold, snowflake, you know, something. But um, this was so weird. She's like at a game as a audience member with the finger yeah i mean there's the finger again it's, the finger. it's crazy um i mean i love denim so the denim is cute underneath it uh i think she looks beautiful in just, both looks she looks beautiful in the russian it's just look. weird they're weird together yeah they're weird together i think the russian look is beautiful i think the second look is beautiful yeah i don't think they are married together or they make much sense together but i think that's the point of the joke um yeah but again and i like i like that yeah I think I would have, to your point, I would have done something more like what you discussed, like do this Russian thing and then reveal it's like a cold, something like that. That's where my mind goes. But um, yeah, or even like Russian spy, since that's like such a big theme, mm. you know, like that would have been very cool to do something out of this because uh, this is obviously like, you know, she's wealthy or uh, some type of queen and then turn into a spy. But, you know, that's something maybe that's expected and she doesn't want to do that. So yeah. uh, this was completely unexpected. Yeah, for sure. And then so the queens, um, we they get critiqued and they go back to do their rate of queen. And plain Jane is the only queen rating strategically. What do you think about that? Yeah. <laughs> Which she said earlier to them that she was going to be fair and then she's not. Word. So... That you know, she's playing all an all stars game. She really is. Literally. She's coming into this is what I mean with the girls now that they've seen all stars, they're coming in and they're just different. They just they're elevated, they're uh more strategic, they're you know, cutthroat more. Uh she's playing the game. She's watched the show. I mean, and like and like you and like you see like you know that these girls are like when I mean, sorry, these girls. When the fan, she's getting a very mixed reaction from the fans. People are like, "I can't yeah. believe that she would do this," and I'm team play the game. Like Rue is giving you the the, the the power to absolutely to like to, make, to, to pick your own destiny. Like do it, and I think this is y'all. It's fucking TV. These girls are making yeah. TV. No one is dying. No one is being tortured. It is fucking TV. Wait, nobody was killed. <laughs> <laughs> no one is dying, bitch. Go outside and fucking lay out in the sun. Go and pet a squirrel. It is, they're having fun on television. Like, re yeah. the fuck lax. To quote Jamie Lee Curtis, yeah. everyone needs to calm down, back the fuck up, and just relax. <laughs> like, it's all fun again. Yeah. Get some vitamin D, please. Yeah, or just some D. Please. Do yeah. something, girl. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think this is very smart. And I think this is the reason why Nymphia was not in the top. Like, because Plain Jane rated her six and everyone else rated her For high. Because sure. I think that's yeah. what that's what happened. Because if people put her in the number two spot, even, then that number six knocked her into three. Yeah. Had to yeah, for sure. I mean, it just immediately took her out. So smart. Yep. Because I mean, that was her biggest competition, in, in my opinion. The, Nymphia was her biggest in terms of the runway and also the talent. I think Nymphia was her biggest competition, and she did a good job of of, of, of knocking her peg down, knocking her down. A peg. Yeah, yeah. So um, they lip sync to "Shower" by Becky G and um, Plain Jane. Uh, she's she she bests Geneva this for me. I think Plain Jane does a really funny job. She's a cute job. Her nipples coming out. She acknowledges it. She laughs it. Where Geneva Geneva is taking a more of a serious, not serious, but Plain Jane's being completely stupid and Geneva is like more so doing the song. And I think to the judges' point, yeah. they love stupid, they love silly, and they love what Plain Jane is giving. Oh yeah. And I love the nipple out. Yara does this joke at brunch where she comes out for the curtain call and the nipple's out and Chanel's like, oh, your nipple. And she's like, oh, you know, and <laughs> but she's just like waving at people as she comes out and the, the full boobs out. Um, it's so funny. It's really... It's campy, it's humor. Uh, people always laugh at it because it's just funny to see a boob exposed, except when you're Janet at the Super Bowl. I guess it's not funny then. But everywhere else ah, it can be. I know. It's not funny fair. Justin Timberlake. He was like, right. <laughs> and yeah, so Plain Jane is a winner of this week's challenge. She wins $5,000 
And she's won my heart. I am so far, if I'm thinking about this episode <laughs> and this episode, my top three are Plain Jane, Safira Cristal, and Nymphia. In no particular order. Oh, that's a great, yeah, that's a great mix. Yeah, I like all three of these queens. And if, yeah. if we're going back old seasons, top four, I would say D- Dawn. Dawn, Plain Jane, Safira, Nymphia. Those are like, if they do a top four, like in the most seasons are, that's who I think is taking it as of right now, but we shall see. Yeah, Dawn's really good. She's great. She's beautiful too. Re- really great yeah. drag. Um, so pretty. Derek, if you who who would be your top four? Oh gosh. Um, well, I have to put Q in it because I love the theater and I love that she makes everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Safira. Um, I oh gosh, I gotta put Mirage and then Plain Jane will be for me. Safira, Q, Mirage, Plain Jane. Yeah. Work. Okay. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's hard. I really want to have like a top five or six, but. Uh, like, I, I want a top 17. Yeah. I want a uh, top all of them. <laughs> no, I don't want to top all of them. No. Derek, thank you so much for coming <laughs> on and, 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 and talking season 16 with me. I really appreciate it, Diva. Oh, thank you. I love anytime Bob is busy with Madonna, then, you know, let me know. Bob and fucking Madonna. <laughs> he's. He's He's been cheating on me with Madonna for about a year now, and um, I'm oh, trying yeah. to get sick of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to get sick of it. I love that. Um, well, Diva, I'm sure I'll see you very soon. Oh, wait! The fucking... Derek, the slime thing. I cannot believe oh. that you are sl- in... Dr- you're, you're here. Did they, did, did they buy you weird? My, my human hair. I know. Uh Okay, this is the, I'll tell you this cuz I haven't talked about it yet. Um they they painted those cans, right? That they had the slime in uh-huh. purple and they had glitter around them. So when the slime came out, it mixed with glitter and that was all stuck in my hair. Oh. Glitter and slime and then I we shot that on a Friday. And um, which is when we have two shows at Drag Race Live. So I was like, okay, if you can wrap me around like three or four o'clock, um, I can catch that five o'clock flight. I'll fly back to Vegas and I'll do the two shows that night. So I'm in the trailer and I'm with my wig on naked, getting slime out of my hair, off of my body, all this stuff, right? The drain fills up because of the slime. So now nothing's draining. And I'm still covered in slime, which is like now drying all over me because you have to get it off or it dries like a mask. Like it's it was so cracky. Um, So I ended up getting out of it, washed my costume in the sink, um, put it in a towel, put my wig in a towel, got to the Burbank airport, flew in. Um, I didn't make the seven o'clock show because we wrapped a little later than I thought. And I got ready and I did the 930 show that night. I cannot believe I was that. like, I'm going back to work. And Rue's like, you're going back to do the show? I said, absolutely. I have two shows today. And he's like, I love that. I love that work ethic. <laughs> so I had to go. Like, I just can't. It makes no sense to me to have a show and not be in it. Yeah. So I was like updating them on the flight. I'm like, okay, this one, I caught this one. It's a little delayed. I'm going to come straight back and uh, get ready for the show. But the slime definitely took some time. I was not expecting it to be that hard to get out. It was like stuck in my jewelry. Like my rings were filled with slime that was just stuck in there. But it washed out of the costume really easy. So I was happy about that. The shoes got kind of ruined because they got wet um, and they were leather, but like where the leather and the soul met is, you know, whatever. But it, for me, what an opportunity. And I know that there's so many other girls that they could have asked to do this that would have been like, absolutely. Yeah. And then there's girls that would say, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm just always a yes girl. Like, I'll do it. I'll figure it out. I'll make it work. Um, I knew it came out of real human hair. So it was going to have to come out of my human hair wig. So I wasn't as stressed about that, but the glitter. The glitter. Was a whole... Yeah, I would have oh been team God. no slime. I would have been like, bitch, I can, I can throw slime on the, on, on the pit crew. Y'all don't throw slime on me. <laughs> yeah, but I love it. I love that shock value <laughs> of it, and I love that um, 
I love the opportunity. Or they would have so, to get like I, one of like in in the in the Christmas special when they had that like that RuPaul body double. I was like, y'all can yeah. like pretend I could dress something up as me and throw it on that. You're not throwing it on my wig. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah, it did. It did all come out. I was I was surprised. I thought it was gonna like stain it pink. Yeah. And I was like, well, now I got a pink hue, <laughs> but um, but it didn't. It, it did come out. So I was. Work pleasantly surprised but it was a lot of fun that was a great episode it was, it was a really good episode a really great episode well derek we're never yeah. surprised by your professionalism your beauty and your Aww. stunningness i will always remember your evisceration of india farah when we did exchange <laughs> rate for all oh that's stuff. the last time i did something with you <laughs> That no was good. wild. Oh, it was so good. Yeah. Derek, it, I get people still tag me that regularly, and they're like, <laughs> I love Derek. This was amazing. We were robbed of you for a whole season of All Stars. We will never forgive <laughs> those girls for robbing us of more Derek Barry on TV. And um, I just love you so much. You're great. Oh, thank you. I love you, too. So much fun. I love working with you, and doing anything with you is a good time. Amen. All right, my dear. Well, you have fun. I'm sure I'll see you soon. Yep, sounds good. Bye. Bye. Thank you.